In modern times in Los Angeles, a group of cops is investigating a mysterious trail that appeared overnight and looks like a large creature made it. Reporter Ethan arrives to cover the news, but nobody wants to answer his questions, although he gets to see a clue. In the middle of the field there's an object that looks like a huge scale. He takes a picture and takes it to his office because he's sure he's seen this before, and as Ethan glances at a medallion that he always wears, he remembers what happened 15 years ago. When he was a little kid, Ethan went with his dad to an antique store. While his dad tried to sell an old blade to Jack, Ethan looked around and found a mysterious box, which unlocked itself after sensing his presence and revealed a huge scale that glowed brightly. Jack could sense what was going on and pretended to have a heart attack, so while Ethan's father rushed to find help, Jack approached Ethan to share a story. Legends spoke of giant snakes called emogis and every 500 years, one snake would be turned into a celestial dragon to reward it for its good deeds. For that to happen, an object known as Ya Yi Yo was needed, which the evil snake Baraki tried to steal for itself. To stop this from happening, the rulers of heaven hid the Ya Yi Yo in Korea and when the local lord had a daughter named Narin, she was destined to carry the Ya Yi Yo on the dragon birthmark on her shoulder. Unfortunately Baraki also learned this information and was waiting to reappear on Narin's 20th birthday, when Ya Yi Yo would finish forming inside her. The heavens also chose two warriors to protect the Ya Yi Yo, Haram and his master Bachun. Haram learned from his master all about the good Emogi and visited it at its cave, Bachun also gave him a medallion sent by heaven that would protect him from any danger. Haram's duty was to make sure that Ya Yi Yo would reach a good Emogi and not Baraki when the time came, and Narin had to be sacrificed for it. However Haram still spent a lot of time with Narin and they two became a couple. Eventually Baraki sent his Atrix army to attack the village, which couldn't defend itself against the Atrix's mighty beasts and magical attacks. The soldiers began checking the shoulders of every woman, causing a citizen to tell them about Narin in exchange for being left alone. At Narin's house, the soldiers killed her father to make her come out of hiding and immediately took her away when they saw the mark on her shoulder. Moments later, Bachun and Haram attacked the soldiers to rescue Narim. While Bochun continued to fight, Haram took Narim to the Emogi cave, and seeing her in pain, he decided to quit his duty as a guardian. After dropping the medallion for Bochun to find later, Haram ran away with Narim instead of sacrificing her to the good Emogi, however Baraki found them and chased after them. Then the creature cornered them on a cliff, and the couple decided to end things rather than be used for evil. After the story was over, Jack gave Ethan the medallion and explained the boy was the reincarnation of Haram while he was the reincarnation of Bachun. This was their second chance to fulfill their duty, so Ethan had to find a girl named Sarah, who was the reincarnation of Naren and also was born with the dragon mark. Once he's remembered the whole story, Ethan asks his friend Bruce to help him find Sarah with his computer skills. However Bruce explains it'll take him a while because there are hundreds of girls named Sarah with shoulder tattoos. Meanwhile the FBI gets the lab results from the scale and now knows there's a strange giant creature loose in the city. At the local gym, Sarah is watching the news on the TV with her best friend Brandy. When the camera shows the scale that was found on the mysterious trails, Sarah is overwhelmed with a feeling of dread and runs home to find an old book of talismans, which she proceeds to hang on the wall to protect herself. Later, Brandy comes to check on her and doesn't believe her when Sarah says something horrible is about to happen, but she does convince her to go out so she can forget about her paranoia. At the bar, Sarah tries to distract herself, but she can't get rid of her fear and decides to leave. On the street, a group of men tries to harass Sarah, only for a weird hobo to suddenly show up and beat the guys up before leaving without saying a word. At the local zoo, caretaker Belafonte hears some weird noises, and when he goes to check, he discovers an elephant has been killed by Baraki. Belafonte runs away in fear and soon Baraki leaves as well, so by the time an Atrix general comes looking for clues, he finds nothing. Later at the police station, Sarah is trying to tell the cops what happened to her, but nobody believes a random hobo could beat three guys up. A journalist does think her story is interesting though, and he takes a picture of her. The next morning, Ethan goes looking for Jack at the store, but he isn't there. The Atrix general finds him and wonders why Ethan isn't looking for the Ya Yi Yo, but at that moment, Ethan wakes up at his office. His co-worker shows up with the story from the police station, and as soon as Ethan sees the picture, he can sense this is the right Sarah. Ethan decides to stay late in the office to look for her address. Meanwhile Belafonte is trying to tell the cops about the snake, but they don't believe him either. Sarah is trying to leave the station in her car, but as soon as she touches it, scales appear on its surface. Terrified, she steps back and bumps into a cop, who suddenly reveals a magic sword and tries to kill her. At that moment Sarah wakes up in her bed and begins feeling unbearable pain, so she calls 911 and they take her to a hospital. Moments later, Brandy tries to visit her friend, but the hospital receptionist won't let her because she isn't family. Brandy and her boyfriend decide to go to Sarah's home and at least get some clothes to bring during visitation hours. Suddenly the whole house begins shaking, and when they go outside to check, they find Baraki roaring at them. The couple tries to run away, but they find their way blocked by the general. This gives Baraki the chance to bite Brandy, but it throws her body in the pool when it realizes this isn't Sarah. 
The next morning when Sarah tries to leave her hospital room, only to discover the door is locked and there's a guard outside. When she begins screaming, security and nurses have to come to calm her down by force. Meanwhile Ethan finally finds Sarah's profile, but he's suddenly interrupted by a phone call telling him to cover a murder. When Ethan realizes the address is the same as Sarah's, he rushes there and is relieved to see the dead girl isn't Sarah. Then he overhears a neighbor saying she saw a giant snake and that the house owner is at the hospital, so Ethan goes there next. The hospital receptionist tells Ethan that Sarah has been quarantined because the mark on her shoulder may be infectious, which sounds very suspicious. Meanwhile Belliford is sent to see a psychiatrist, who decides he's crazy. At that moment, Baraki appears at the window and Belliford tries to prove his story, but the snake leaves before the doctor can see it, and Baraki is sent to the mental ward. Back to Ethan, he wonders what to do when he suddenly bumps into a doctor who recognizes him from his stories, saying he's a big fan. The doctor agrees to help him see Sarah and takes him to her room, where he finds her in a shy and scared state because nobody believes her when she says something dangerous is coming. Ethan explains it's already happening, but before he can say more, Baraki begins attacking the hospital. The doctor comes to warn the couple and sends them out through a back exit, right after they're gone the doctor reveals to be Jack using an illusion again, implying he had also been the hobo. Ethan and Sarah find Bruce waiting in his car and immediately take off. Baraki tries chasing after them, but the car is faster and leaves it behind. A few miles later, Bruce accidentally hits someone with the car, and Ethan recognizes him as the Atrix general from his dream. The general wants to capture Sarah, so Bruce tries shooting him and Ethan hits him with a piece of wood, but neither can hurt him. Next Bruce steals the general's sword, but the sword sheath itself because Bruce isn't its master, and the general hits Bruce with a shock of magic. Then he tries to go after Sarah again, only to be suddenly hit by a random car. Ethan quickly drags Sarah into the new car and asks the driver to take them away. Afterward, Baraki decides to summon the rest of his Atrix army as backup. Meanwhile the FBI starts a meeting to discuss what's going on. Some higher-ups don't want to believe it, but there's enough evidence to indicate there's a mythical monster on the loose, and all the clues lead back to Sarah. Therefore the agents get an order to capture the girl and terminate her if necessary. They also send a group of soldiers to go after the snake, finding it hiding in a cave. The soldiers open fire, but the bullets do nothing and Baraki chases them out of the cave, where the soldiers are quickly defeated by the general's magic. Moments later, the driver leaves Ethan and Sarah by the beach, asking them to leave town. After they're gone, the driver reveals she was also Jack. Ethan and Sarah go for a walk to discuss the visions they've had and they share a kiss while Ethan thinks about the fact Sarah may have to die for the ya yi yo. Next, they go to visit a psychology professor who specializes in extracting repressed memories. The professor hypnotizes Sarah and she begins seeing memories of the day her father died, but then she keeps going back and sees Naran and Haram's story. Suddenly Sarah starts glowing and floating, meaning the ya yi yo has finally finished forming. This awakening has been sensed by Baraki, who shows up to start destroying the house. Ethan and Sarah escape in a car, and Ethan calls Bruce to ask for a favor. Moments later, the couple meets Bruce at a cafe, and Bruce confirms he's pulled some strings to get a helicopter for them. He also gives Ethan a gun even if Ethan hates weapons. Afterward, Jack shows up and reminds Ethan he can't change Sarah's fate, so the right thing is to take her to the Emogi cave. Ethan ignores him and drags Sarah out of the building right before Baraki arrives to attack again. Bruce picks the couple in his car, only for Baraki to throw another car at them to make them crash. Ethan and Sarah try to run again and find themselves cornered by Baraki, but at that moment the police open fire on the snake and give the couple the chance to escape. As Baraki chases after them through the city and causes lots of destruction, Ethan and Sarah climb to the top of the Liberty Building, where the helicopter is waiting for them. The moment it tries to take off, Baraki grabs it with its mouth, so Ethan makes Sarah jump with him back to the roof before the snake crashes the helicopter on the ground. The sky begins darkening as Baraki gets ready to devour Sarah, but the army helicopters arrive and begin shooting at it. Baraki fights the helicopters, making many of them crash but eventually becoming overpowered by their attack. At that moment, the general and his beasts arrive as backup, and they destroy everything on their path no matter if it's helicopters, tanks, or buildings. Sarah and Ethan leave the building and are found by two FBI agents, who take them away in their car. When they reach a safe warehouse to hide in, the agents revealed they've researched the legend and they know about Sarah's destiny. One of the agents tries to shoot Sarah, but Ethan jumps between them to save her and the bullet only wounds his arm. When the agent tries again, his partner shoots first because he's realized killing two young innocent people isn't the answer. Then the agent gives them his car keys and asks them to do the right thing. Moments later when the couple is on the road, the general's beasts show up and begin shooting fireballs at them. One hits the car and makes it flip, causing the crash to knock the couple out. When Ethan wakes up, he finds himself tied to a pole in Baraki's lair. Sarah is dragged to the altar to be sacrificed to the snake, but right before she can be devoured, Ethan's desperation to save her finally activates the pendant. A bright light from heaven hits the pendant and the whole Etrix army, instantly knocking out Baraki and killing everyone else except for the general. 
The burning pendant breaks the rope and Ethan runs towards the altar to fight the general, only to get easily overpowered. When the general tries to land his final strike, he accidentally hits the pendant and gets killed by the magic. Baraki wakes up and throws Ethan away before going after Sarah. However at that moment the good Imogi finally shows up and begins fighting Baraki. As the monsters engage in a furious battle, Ethan wants to take the chance to escape, but Sarah sees that the good Imogi is losing and finally accepts her destiny. She summons the Yayi Jao and sends it to the good Imogi, who instantly wakes up and transforms into a legendary dragon. With this new power, the dragon easily defeats Baraki and kills it for good with a fireball. Afterward, the dragon comes to check on Ethan, who is holding Sarah's unconscious body. The dragon expels the Yaji Jao for a few seconds to transform Sarah's body into her pure essence, and she gets to appear before Ethan to tell him she loves him and that they'll see each other again someday. Then Sarah becomes part of the Yaji Jao and the dragon picks it up to go to heaven with Sarah's tears in its own eyes. Ethan watches them with sadness, and when he turns around he sees Jack's spirit disappearing too as he congratulates him for doing the right thing. 